I'm from Uptown and my favorite thing about there is the activities. I'm from North Philly and the favorite thing about my neighborhood is, uh, is how everybody get along. I'm from North Philly and the favorite thing about my neighborhood is the old heads. My name is Winnie Smart Toom and what I love about my neighborhood is my friends and my family. Higher income families and individuals move into communities of lower income. Developers buy up properties and these communities offer owners payouts and develop better housing, raising the property value and allowing families and individuals with higher incomes to move in. This process displaces the previous inhibitors of these communities, often leaving them homeless in public housing or unable to reside in their neighborhood. Alright, so can I get your name? Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown, do you know what gentrification is? Yes, I do know what gentrification goes. Can you give me your definition and opinion on it? Well, de definition is you come into someone's neighborhood, right, and you buy their house. The house could be worth whatever, X. And you buy it, you fix it up, you jazz it up, you put all kinds of money into it, and you jack the price up. Now that excludes low income housing, that excludes disability, those with disabilities, it excludes so many people. Really what they want is good, hard earned money, top of the dollar money. And do I agree with it? No, because it cuts us out. And when I say us, mainly people of color, it just cuts us out. We have no say, we can't do anything about it. Have you been affected by it? Yes. Oh. Everyone's affected in some kind of way in inner city communities. Can you tell your story? Well, um, one example was I was living in North Philadelphia. I think it was like 20th and Dolphin, and it was it was a pretty good area, high in crime though. But it was the houses were pretty good, and the Temple came down and he was starting buying up houses, buying up houses. And my cousin, I don't know why he sold this house. And um, he thought about some things that he didn't want to sell it. And they didn't care that his mother owned the house and that it was passed down to him and he really had to think about it. He made a mistake and he, wanted, he didn't want to do it. They did not care anything about it. The end result was they fixed the house up. They bought it for like 17,000. Now this was back in 85. They bought it for 17,000. They put 3,000 in it and they sold it for $195,000. It's terrible. And it's been escalating for the last eight years, gentrification in all our neighborhoods, every city across the nation. Uh, Q, have you been around this area recently? I live in this area. Uh, have you, can, can you tell me some of the changes you've seen throughout the uh, years? Well, in the last eight years, um, a lot of students needing housing besides Morgan Hall and other halls, they needed to house these students that were coming in. So they start buying, going into our neighborhoods in North Philadelphia, buying up, uh, most of the houses were like dollar houses or uh, abandoned houses. They would get the deeds or whatever. I don't know how the process goes. But in the last eight years, they've been buying up these houses to, to house students, fixing them up, jacking the prices up because they know low-income housing people, they can't afford it. They know uh, disability people cannot afford it. And then regular working people like you and I, we can't afford it because of the jacked up prices. And it's just been going on one street after another. And then they started down 33rd Street making, I mean, it, it's incredible what they're doing to our communities. I, I, you know, and we can't do anything about it. So, um, you've lived, like, you've been around this neighborhood a lot? Yeah, um, I actually was up over in, um, on Allegheny not too long ago, and, um, and I actually on Gerard, I forgot, I think Gerard is this way, and it was a real bad neighborhood over here, but they got the um, college kids moving in, actually. Like, it's a real, it's like a real nice little, um, it was one place I saw, it was like a real nice two-bedroom, like, in the basement new um freaking washer and dryer the wood is like the wood is they got that gray expensive wood you know what yeah. i mean the islands in the kitchen is like that real like um 
the granite or whatever. And I go in there and you see this very expensive. It's like real expensive looking, but there's people with, like you said, high income going in there. And all the homeless people, all the people of low income as well. You don't see them no more. I mean, you see them just walking around like there'll be nobody's helping them out. You know what I'm saying? Like, what about yeah. there? You can't just come in and like, you know what I mean, fix the area and then kick everybody to be help out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like me, I had got, I was at a certain point where um, I was living good and I was comfortable, but I always come back and I always try to help people out. All right. This is where I was talking about their issue, right there at the lot. There's, there's nothing there, like I said, it was just a waste. I used to be, the house was, used to be partnered up with the house next door. We used to live right there. We used to have friends all down the block. Everybody used to come out and knock on our door, like, yo, you coming out today? You coming out today? What you about to do? What you doing? Come on, play with us. But now it's just, there's really nothing there. So that empty lot right there, that was your house? Yeah. I used to live, I used to live right there because that, that house next door, it was it was still doing work to it. So it was, they, they, added, they added a new house to it. So, and they, and they were renting rooms and I had, and my mom rented out two rooms and we was living with somebody and the rent was $500. And when I came home from school, she, she was on the phone and I was like, mom, what's going on? She was like, we gotta uh, go live with grandma because because the landlord excuse me, because the landlord rent, uh, bought uh, sold the house. The landlord sold the house and now two years later when we come back to it, it's just it's nothing but a lot and it's like he sold the house for nothing. Now I don't know if someone actually going to do something with this place, but I feel like that it was unacceptable to just sell that place and there was nothing there. My name is Diana Constant. I'm from Port of West Haiti. And that is where I first experienced gentrification. Eight years ago, I lived in Haiti with my grandmother. She got kicked out of her home because she couldn't afford the increase in rent and cost of living. We had nowhere else to go. So the three of us moved in with my aunt. My grandmother, Budi, as I called her, started her own business to keep up with the cost of living for a few years until my mother sent for us to come to America. We've been here for five years. I thought things like what happened to my grandmother only happened back at home. But when I got here, I realized it was no different. Well, we're down at Kensington, Tioga. Standing in front of the neighborhood furniture store, but what used to be the neighborhood furniture store it got bought up by studio offices. This really was the closest neighborhood neighborhood furniture store. Like this was really the closest one for all the people inside the neighborhood and the community. Now we got old people inside the community that can't get their furniture because the, clo the now the closest furniture store is two miles like two miles from Kensington, and that people old people don't drive no more. They can't drive. Can't, it got no transportation to get their furniture. You had like, they can't put a couch or something on a bus, so how they gonna get their stuff? Basically, this, basically what I'm saying is this business had no guards, like had no care for the people inside the neighborhood to buy up the neighborhood furniture store. So now I'm trying to figure out how people inside the neighborhood are gonna get their furniture. So we're down at Kensington, Allegheny. What I got behind me is a garden. Before we start talking about the garden, we're gonna talk about the people that built the garden. They built the garden because like they was getting kicked out. They had got a 30 day notice before they got kicked before they getting kicked out. So they said before they getting kicked out, they're gonna build a garden, they're gonna build something in their behalf to leave inside the neighborhood. I'm looking for a new property. I'm trying to stay in the area. I may not stay down here because you know it's getting a little expensive to, to work down this area down here now. Oh, it is. It is. I saw your face expression. It's getting very, very expensive. Uh, you have property down here now where $1,900 a month for, for an apartment. Yeah. Don't look at me like that because I, <laughs> yes, I'm dead serious. What was it before? Uh, you can get an apartment around here at the time. You should have been able to get one for like 700 maybe a little less. But now, uh, the place over here next to Laundromat, he gets $1,900 a month. For that I watched him build that from the ground up. Um, building up the street here has it's like one apartment but three bedrooms, three bathrooms, and one apartment. 
So you can imagine that 1900 or 2400, I could hit three different parents to get all that money and still everybody will be able to live there and still be able to share everything that's going on in each one of those apartments. That's the kind of diversity that's going on in this neighborhood. Whereas though it's pushing people like us out because we don't have the, the, um, the finances to keep the stability in our lives and all. And, and that's the problem with a lot of people right now. Prices of everything is going up. And what can you do? So look, you can go get uh, help by contacting your nearest block captain. If you don't know what your block, who your block captain is, you can go talk to people on your on your block and ask them. What block captains do, they basically organize the community events or block events like block parties. They get permission, they sign papers, they do petitions and stuff so you can do an activity. And that actually help you help your neighborhood a whole lot. So go contact your block captains. All right, also, you could talk to the Pennsylvania House Housing Finance Agency, and they works to provide affordable home ownership and rental apartment options for senior adults, low and moderate income families, and people with special housing needs. Through its carefully managed mortgage problems and investments in multifamily housing developments, PHFA also promotes economic development across the city. Give PHA a call at 800-822-1174. That's again, 800-822-1174. Or visit them at phfa.org. Another way to help out your community is by contacting UC Green, which is a nonprofit organization which helps plant out trees all over the city. You can contact them by calling 215-476-0124. Another service would be Project Home, which is a nonprofit organization that provides housing opportunities for employment, medical care, and education to homeless and low-income persons. And the number for that would be 215-232-7272. This is our neighborhood. of the community.